Champions League has been such a source of drama, joy and despair for the Blues over the last couple of decades. Isn't it great to be back as a tough-looking group stage begins? Pedro hits it! Oh! Is that for Costa? Beautiful! 3-0! It's in! Back Yoko! That's right. Onside! And it's in! Chelsea 6, Carabag nil. And the Blues will be looking to continue their perfect start in the competition tonight in the Spanish capital, where a new stadium welcomes Chelsea for match day two in Europe's premier club competition, the Champions League. Atletico Madrid against Chelsea kick off at 7.45 and build up on its way with the help of a man who played his football at the highest level for both club and country. It's it towards Ballard! Michael Ballack joining Frank Sinclair and Pat Nevin for Champions League Match Night Live. A first meeting with Atletico Madrid since 2014 and a first in the group stage for eight years. Gentlemen, lovely to have you both here. Michael, especially for you. And how much do you look forward to these Champions League nights? Um, often very much because there was this uh, special atmosphere. You mentioned it. Uh, it was in the evening, you know. Uh, um, yeah, lights, a special atmosphere, sometimes a bit raining i love that too you know <laughs> and uh, it was different to the three or five uh, p.m kickoff uh, but uh, yeah there were special nights and when the the anthem the national uh, not the national team sorry the champions league oh, anthem came it's amazing uh, it was this special feeling you get goosebumps sometimes and and uh, yeah you could feel that the preparation from the morning to the evening um, i think all the players they loved it Frank, we always talk, it's, one, it's the music. If you're a fan watching, when that music kicks in, you think, right, here we go. Yeah, the, the hairs on the back of your neck <laughs> stand up without a shadow of a doubt. And, um, you know, Chelsea's always had a history of European nights, you know, going back to the 70s yeah. when we won last time we won the, the European Cup the first time, sorry. Um, and, you know, the atmosphere has always been super special in, the, in these evening evening games. Now, before we go any further, we should say a happy belated birthday for yesterday, Michael. Yeah. How Thank did you. you spend the day? Was it nice and relaxing with no football or did you just keep the football there? It was uh, nearly no football. <laughs> I, I went yes. to the, uh, as you might be know, I, I live in Munich and I went to the Oktoberfest as I do oh, nice. quite often during my, <laughs> my birthday. So I did yesterday as well with friends and family and uh, uh, one ear was at the, the results of the games yesterday, but of course I celebrated a bit. That's a great place, to isn't it? Oktoberfest. I mean, you yeah. can't get too carried away with the drinking, but it's a nice place to go. Yeah, I know. A few pints there, wouldn't you? There are big <laughs> pints over there as well. So, um, yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it anyway. But we're yeah. talking about, if we talk about the perfect birthday present or present you could ever be given, it would be getting this Champions League title back. Won it in 2012, come the end of the season, if we could be lifting that trophy again. Yeah, well, we, we shared those amazing moments together, we, you know, when Drogba gets that penalty and, and scores the, the winning one. And um, it was a very special night, and go down, obviously, in, in Chelsea's history. Um, we're due to be involved in it again, obviously, yeah. missing it last season. And, you know, this, this team is strong enough and confident enough, that's why they won the league last year, that they should put up a, a fair challenge in the competition. Now, something that I don't know if you've seen this, Frank, that Michael has started doing ahead of match days. Yeah. Is on social media, does a little video. I, I, it's like a little bit of a team talk. It's like a motivational speech. Now, I've seen it, yeah. It, have you seen it? Yes, For I those have. maybe who haven't, we just, we've got a couple, Michael, <laughs> that we're just going to show everybody. Hi, Chelsea fans. Another difficult match after the defeat against Burnley. Hopefully, better result today at Tottenham, but will be difficult, of course. But uh, hopefully, get three points. Good luck. Hi, Chelsea fans. Uh, I think one year absence is enough. A Champions League feeling is coming back to Stamford Bridge. Um, first home match today, and I'm pretty sure we will keep the three points at home. My prediction 3 0.
I like these positive sort of motivational team talks. So what I want to do is I want to do one now from each of you. Now, oh, here we go. Now, you, <laughs> <laughs> you've managed football teams, so I have no doubt you're going to be very good at this. But Michael's going to lead the way. Now, Michael, your camera is straight over there. There's a gentleman waiting. We'll have to do you. this in German as well. Or... No, no, I'm going to do it in oh, German. Okay. This is going to be the, the worst <laughs> motivational speech difficult. you've yeah. ever heard. So, Michael, we'll give you 15 seconds okay. to really get everyone watching up for tonight why it is so important. So when you're ready, go, and I will tell you when it's done. Uh, it's, it's always difficult if you talk to the fans and you have to be always positive that's a difficulty difficulty because you know you can't win all the games so as might be tonight because it's a very very difficult away match uh, atletico is one of the strongest teams especially at home so i that's think it. a draw would be good so 1-1 one, yes. one, my prediction okay, we went slightly over but i think that was very so, okay. so, so michael has set the bar so right. same camera frank same amount same of camera time. that one this one yeah. a gentleman waving at you so if you're ready in your own time your team talk okay hi chelsea fans Live from Chelsea TV at Stamford Bridge. Love to be out there to support the boys. Be the 12th man. You've got to keep talking. You've got to keep talking. Not, time's not oh, OK, up. I thought he took some of my time. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> but I did like the fist bump. I like yeah. that. They kind of got, you That's know. the one. There'll be plenty of them tonight. I'm yeah, sure. well, I hope so. And Pat, I haven't even said good evening to you. <laughs> good evening. But can I give you 15 seconds? You yourself have been a manager. Michael set the standard. Frank was a little bit short on time, but had a fist pump. So if, <laughs> if you're ready, Frank, uh, Pat. Come on, Frank, even. if you like. <laughs> <laughs> Don't come later down. OK? Off you go. OK. Right, Chelsea fans, this is the one we've got to win. If we win this game, even a point would do, but if we win this game, we're an absolute stick on to go through. Give it everything. We have not lost a game this season, apart from that stupid one right at the start. We will win this and we will go through. How's that? You like that? Bit of Scottish passion there. A Scottish passion? Did you understand the word? Yes, yeah. we do. <laughs> but gentlemen, thank you very much for your, your team talks, your motivational speeches. I think we've got everyone going. Now, at this year's Player of the Year Awards, uh, Michael took to the stage and he said some really lovely things about John Terry. There was, though, a story that Michael forgot to mention, but happily, when JT was up on stage with presenter Jeremy Fine, he told all. I thought he was going to tell the story, actually, when, when we played Bayern Munich away. I don't know if you remember, Bally. Obviously, being captain, I go out first um, in the Champions League and I walked out. And I come across Bally and Khan in the tunnel and I kind of look round and I thought, these two are big lumps here. I look round, Lamps and Didier are nowhere to be seen and these two have got me up against the wall and we're having it, us three in the tunnel before the game and, you know, trying to intimidate me. But I'm thankful, you know, a few years later we, we, we had him on our side and he was a, he was a big player for us. So anyway, but Michael, we feel we should give you right of reply. I mean, John Terry saying, sort of had him up against the tunnel before. How did that come about? Was that sort of pre-match intimidation tactics? Of course. I mean, I, I remember <laughs> we lost the first first match 4-2. Uh, uh, and um, uh, it was a strong side, Chelsea. I mean, we know we were good at home as well. But these, these matches, these big matches on, on that level, uh, they start in the tunnel because uh, um, confidence... Uh, is, a, is a big part in sport in general, but in football as well. And, uh, uh, and especially if it comes to the top, top level where uh, small things deci could decide a game, there is uh, a bit in intimidation, intimidate <laughs> uh, players. That's part. He was younger than us. He was uh, still a young player. But um, of course, uh, it's part of the game, uh, off the pitch and on the pitch. And it starts in the tunnel. And, uh, but everything in the... In, in, in a fair context, you know, yeah. of course, but yeah. of course you go until the edge because at the end everyone wants to win. Yeah. And I guess, Frank, you take it as a compliment. If a couple of guys are targeting and you're a young guy in the tunnel, you've got to look at that as a positive that they've singled me out. Yeah, definitely. If he was a bad player, they wouldn't bother. So, um, you know, as you know, in football, you know, I've always been a big believer that 60% is mental, 40% physical. So you can win and lose games in the tunnel. And, um, you know, the intimidation, I can see where they're coming from with that. I think we don't think about that as fans, that sort of stuff, like we see a little bit of the tunnel, everyone seems to be smiling and holding the hand of a mascot and out we go and we get on with things, but I think we forget as fans that a big part of it, I mean, is it too strong to say, Michael, that you can win or lose a match in the tunnel? No, you can't win it, but you can put it in the right direction. I mean, there's also a famous one between uh, Roy Keane uh, and, and uh, yeah. Vieira. Exactly, yes. and, uh, and you see the other teammates watching, you know, because when the two leaders are challenging a bit or battling in, in a few words and uh, young players could be affected maybe not mm -hmm. the key player but some of them and so it could affect some players but it's part of the game you know it's part in in a lot of sports team sports where you being connected on the pitch talking is part of the game 
on and off the pitch. It will be not decided in the tunnel, but it could have a little effect. <laughs> mm. Michael, you had some you had some big nights in the Champions League. You came very close to Bayer Leverkusen in 2002 and Chelsea and Moscow in 2008. If you could take away one moment, one memory from playing in the Champions League, what would it be for you? What, what stands out for you? Um, to be honest, it's the, it's the penalty uh, shootout in, in, in Moscow uh, because we were so close. And I remember um, after losing that six years before with, with Leverkusen against Real Madrid, yeah. I thought now it's the time for me, for, for us, yeah. to lift the trophy because I thought I, I deserved it at that moment. You know, I waited so long and uh, I remember we had that last penalty because Ronaldo missed it before. And Gen uh, JT, you know, he, he slipped then and then hit the crossbar, not in. And that was a, a special moment which will be always in my mind. Yeah, yeah. Not in a very positive way, but as, as part of a football. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But this is uh, a, a moment which will be always remembering first on top when I think about uh, Champions yeah. League, besides all these nice goals and wins, but yes. actually that was the miss which hurts me most. It's, it's interesting, Pat, isn't it? We could talk about Champions League and memories all evening, but sometimes, as Michael said, it's not maybe the moment when you win, but it's, it's when you lose that, that does stay with you. Absolutely. I mean, talking about that lose, the Bayer Leverkusen lose, um, that, was, that was at Hamden Park, I believe. Was yes. It? And uh, the goal was scored by Zinedine Zidane. What ever happened to him? I mean, what did he ever do in the game? <laughs> I was directly behind that as a supporter watching that going. It was a fantastic goal. Talking of Zinedine Zidane, though, um, we're talking about people who can pass the ball and have great skill. Tonight, we're looking at somebody who's going to have to be able to go and create something for us. Now, there's a number of players that are capable of creating for our team just now. But in this specific game, I think there's one player that must play. Now, we don't know, the, or I certainly don't know the team yet. But I really want Seth Fabregas to be starting this game. And the reason being is he can create from deep as well. Have a look at um, the capabilities of this player. I mean, he is very, very special. I've talked about him before many, many times. If you give him any space whatsoever at any part in the game, he will do something with it. Have a look at here. If you go there, a little bit of space, that's far too much space for Seth Fabregas. You know if you give him that sort of space... He's going to be able to play that ball all day long, all the way out there, all day long. He's going to get, be able to get that ball in there. But if you allow him, if you let that ball play on, have a look at it, oh, make sure it starts again. If you play that ball on a little bit there, Seth Fabregas, he's going to try and play in a minute. Um, no, he's decided to phrase this now, but Seth Fabregas is a really important player, always comes up eventually. He's a big, big guy for us. But it's not just in that forward position, it's much, much deeper as well. But if there's a tiny little pass on, he'll get it. And we might only get a few possibilities this, in this game. This is maybe a perfect example of it here. I'll just pause it here. That ball that comes through there, that, you're going to have to do that quite a lot tonight. The reason why you're going to have to do that a lot, because you are going to get isolated up front. Whoever's up front, and we expect it's going to be Marata up front, you're going to get isolated. And if that's the case, you need someone who can pass it from deep. No one's better than Seth Fabregas for doing that. Now, he's a big player for us. Have a look at it from this angle. Puts into that sort of area and is very, very special for us. So we've got the likes of Willian, we've got the likes of Hazard, we've got the likes of Pedro, and we've got Seth Fabregas as well. They can't all play tonight. If there's one guy out of them I think needs to play tonight, I'm desperate to see you playing tonight, it's Seth. Thank you very much, Pat. Well, the good news is I can tell you that we do have the team news. So we've got the Chelsea confirmed starting 11 for this evening. So let's reveal Antonio Conte's team. Now, no English side has won away to Atletico Madrid in the Champions League. That is a task facing Chelsea this evening. And what really stands about, out about that team is Eden Hazard. Now, he starts against Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup. But he's starting this evening in the Champions League. Cesc Fabregas, who Pat was just talking about, he gets a start in there and at the back. You can see it's Cahill that gets the nod again. David Luiz, Aspilicueta, Courtois and Goal, and Moses, Kenti, Bakayoko, and Alonso, and Morata up top. So that is your Chelsea 11 for this evening. And Frank Pat said that Fabregas is a player he wanted to see this evening. Are yeah. you happy to see him in the side? And what about the position he is in the 11? Yeah, I think the position says that Chelsea want to get uh, to outnumber. Obviously, Atletico Madrid in the midfield area, especially central, because obviously, you know, with Kante and Bakayoko in there as well, what we're trying to do is create a 3v2 in the middle of the park. And, you know, if Fabregas can get the ball in between the lines, 
have the ball on the half turn and then look for the likes of Hazard and Morata running forward, then, you know, possibly, you know, we could get something from that. And Michael, great to see Eden Hazard starting. That break in his ankle, he had to undergo the operation. He missed pre-season. I'm sure he's still away from full fitness, but it's such a positive that he's building himself up and he starts this evening. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Antonio Conte wouldn't bring him uh, in such an important match like tonight if he's not fit. So that means... He's, he's getting better and better and he's for sure, he's the key player. He's the player who can make the difference with all his movements, his vision. We see it here, it's, uh, it's a fantastic player and uh, yeah, he will be really motivated I think and happy that he's back in the starting 11, you know, in, in such an important game. And Antonio Conte made it very clear, Frank, that he wasn't going to rush Eden Hazard. You cannot, with someone coming back from a break, they've got to build the confidence up to get knocked on that ankle, to go down on that ankle. They've got to get the fitness up. You've got to bring everything together and you cannot rush it. Yeah, absolutely. And, the, you know, the biggest decision the manager's had to make is when to bring Eden back. Obviously, the team's been crying out for him. But at the same time, the former Pedro, the former William, the form of uh, Fabigas, when he's played in that further role on the right hand side or on the left hand side, they've they've made it easier for the manager. So yeah. you know the time is right now, as Michael says there, and uh, we let him on off leash now. <laughs> we can let him go. Mm. Someone else we seem to have let go, and he settled in so well. Who came last season was Marcus Alonso, the Spaniard, 26 years of age now, came from Sunderland. He weighed in with his goals last season. He got the two and the win at Wembley away to Spurs this season, and he's someone that people weren't talking about in the middle, but he. He's become, Michael, a very important part of this team. Absolutely. And uh, I remember when he joined Chelsea, uh, some of the people, also experts, thought uh, they were a bit concerned about the sign, you know, and, and, and what is actually his, his role in that team. But, you know, he, he found it really quick. And, you know, when they changed from, from four in the back to three in the back uh, on, the le on the left side, and he's always moving forward, he has the legs. To go up and down. I remember, I mean, Ashley Cole at his best. He was a player who could do it in a high speed. Maybe not a similar player, but a, a little bit like him, you know. And what he has, he can score goals. And yes. if you have this ability, actually, uh, from that position to defend, to actually, uh, that's because his main, I think, strength yeah. to defend and to, but also to read the game immediately. And, and have the legs to go into the box and also scoring goals. I mean, that's a big strength Chelsea has on the left side. That's the bonus. Right, let's head out to the Spanish capital where we've been soaking up the atmosphere and chatting to a few of the fans. My name is George, I'm a Chelsea fan here in Madrid. Uh, my name is Miles Olmsted. I'm originally from Emerson, Massachusetts. My name is Jack Simkin. Uh, I'm from Surrey. And it's my first week in Madrid and Chelsea are in town, so it's worked out perfectly. Got my shirt on, ready for the big game tonight. What excites me about the Champions League is it provides an opportunity to test yourself, to test your squad against the best teams in Europe. There, there's certainly an extra edge. But th these trips are something special, you know, you get on that flight, you get to the airport, and it's like that's where it really starts. And you have to really get up for it. Um, so you have to be loud, you have to be vocal to support your team. Um, so I'm expecting that from the Chelsea fans tonight. It's going to be animated, that's for sure. I think. Everyone wants to stand, everyone wants to sing. It's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. Any evening game under the lights is going to be big, particularly in the new ground. And to make big away trips is what being a football fan is all about. Um, They're buzzing this time of year. My early experiences in Madrid have been wonderful, so we'll see. Yeah, looking forward to it tonight. It's going to be an amazing, amazing evening. Yeah, can't wait. Fans can't wait. We can't wait. Frank, listening to just Antonio Conte and Cesar Spilicueta in the build-up to this, they feel that this is, this is the test. This is where, at this stage of the season, where the squad will be tested and they will find out exactly where the squad is. Yeah, absolutely. You know what Atletico Madrid are all about and what their manager insists in when you play against an Atletico Madrid team. First and foremost, they're going to be aggressive, they're going to work hard for each other and they're going to be very organised and difficult to break down. Um, Massive test for Chelsea. Um, I think it's very important that we don't get beat tonight. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think everybody would take, you know, I'd speak for everybody in saying that we'd probably be happy with a point in, in a, a crucial fixture like this after the first round of games. Yeah. Chelsea trained at Cobham before they flew, but they did have a little bit of training in the evening in Spain, which is understandable. It is, Michael, very important, but perhaps more so if you're playing in a brand new stadium where no one has any experience of. Yeah, absolutely. And you want to get this feeling for this new stadium and obviously it's uh, uh, for both teams really exciting. And uh, I remember when we joined a new stadium, 
in Munich also, it's, it's very special for the players uh, on one side to leave the old one, but also the, the uh, yeah, they're really looking forward for the, for the new stadium and the fans as well. The fans, they mostly they're adapting really well to this new football stadiums and, and the atmosphere is even better than in the old one sometimes. Uh, so it doesn't make things easier for Chelsea tonight, but that's why I think they want to have this little bit of extra feeling with the time also to adapting. Yeah. Because these small things, they're really important for players sometimes. Mm. Uh, people are underestimate that uh, sometimes if you train in the morning or in the evening, it doesn't make a difference, but it makes sometimes a difference, okay. especially when it comes to big, big games. Absolutely. We have a big, big game this evening. Right, it's time to hear from the man who has prepared and selected tonight's Chelsea 11. And Antonio Conte knows the challenge ahead is a tough one against a side who have been very strong at the back since the season began. It's always uh, very difficult to predict before the game. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to do this, but for sure uh, to consider only four goals, uh, and it means that uh, you have a solid uh, defence. Do you think a midfield battle will be very important in a game like this? Uh, yeah, I think uh, that uh, this, this type of game, uh, you decide this, uh, this game uh, in the midfield and then also to create a chance and uh, to try to, to score when, uh, when you create a chance to, to be uh, clinical. So what was your memories of Diego Simeone as a player? We, we played against uh, many times uh, because uh, when uh, when I was uh, a Juventus player and uh, I played with uh, Inter and then with Lazio, yeah, we played a lot uh, a lot of games uh, against. Uh, yeah, I remember him uh, uh, as a, a really good midfielder. Now, Michael, as a belated birthday present from us, <laughs> you get to spend a little bit of time with Pat at the touchscreen. Well, Thanks. I'm <laughs> seriously looking forward to this and really looking forward to this. Right, first of all, let's have a look um, at the team being the most important thing. We've lined it up like that, and that's kind of one way to look at it. Do you think it'll be like that, Michael? Or do you think Hazard will be further up, maybe up there somewhere in Fabregas around about there? Is that more how you would see it? Yeah, I'm, think, I'm pretty sure they have a lot of freedom. Morata, of course, up front, but Hazard, very intelligent player, as much as Fabregas. So I think they will have freedom uh, around Morata to pick up the ball wherever they want. And, but what's more important is how much space they get from the defensive line of, of Atletico. But um, I think it suits Fabregas today, so he has not much too much defensive defensive work to do with Bakayako and Kante in the back. So it's quite solid in the middle and with three very intelligent players up front. Well, it's a position a you know incredibly well. It's possibly, would you say that was your favourite position to play yourself? Uh, yes, I mean, it, it's a bit depending on the opponent team as well. That's, uh -huh. and, and today we will see a very organised uh, Atletico team like always. So that means we... Chelsea need intelligent players and they're on the pitch. They need Fabregas, they need Hazard. Um, well, let's have a look at them anyway. Their team uh, as it is set up just now. I mean, that's Godin and Hernandez. I mean, they're really, really strong. Luis, we know him very well. Felipe Luis did very well here at Chelsea. Where do you see the danger? I have to say, I, I think Griezmann is fabulous, but where do you see the dangers in this team? Up front, of course. Uh, Carrasco, very good player, uh, technical player, can come with the ball with speed. Uh, Griezmann, of course, with freedom as, as well, uh, with the pace, with the vision uh, to score goals, to find uh, the right space. It's where he's... But it's well, you're talking about the space. He, he does come back, doesn't he? Exactly. He likes to drop back. If he, if he has the feeling he doesn't get too much balls, he wants to get involved in the game, he drops back, pick, pick up some balls. But it's not so much about the rest uh, who's playing, it's more how good organised this Atletico uh -huh. team is and that makes it um, complicated but as uh, but what, of course yeah. Griezmann is a key player and if he's in shape it will be I think he, I think he, I think he's world class. Carrasco does score a lot of goals just now. I'm looking at that this sort of area, right? That sort of area there. I think that's where Griezmann likes to pick the ball. It's kind of, we would call the old inside left position. So if we have a look at where we be worried about because we need to make sure that we cover this sort of area. So let's have a look at this. This is where we cover in those sort of areas just now. And where Griezmann does his work, I say it's the inside left position, and have a look at what happens when we get those positions. We've got three players who work very, very hard to get back, and they are Canty, right in that area I'm talking about there, but also Aspilicueta and Moses. Now, I'm going to just take the ball down here. I'm just going to pause it down here for a second. 
I think this is where Griezmann will get the ball quite a bit. And have a look at it there. When it goes down there, Aspilicueta is co close, and you've got other players getting Moses or whatever, and Canty will come close as well. I think that's an important area for us to make sure that they don't get help, they, they don't cause us damage tonight. Uh, absolutely, and as I mentioned, it, it's important that you have a lot of midfield players on the pitch. They're responsible for the offensive, but also for the defensive. And that's what they do. All three in the middle, they can read games, they know where can uh, develop a danger on the field. And uh, I'm sure there's not just Kante mostly who's picking up Griezmann in, in certain areas. It's also who, or especially... Who, who backs them up, yeah. Excel, uh, uh, exactly. Well, see, see if you look at them, I've, I've taken quite a few of these. This time Moses goes out. But have a look at the guys beside them. It's Kante's getting closest. As play quite as there. They're not needed in that occasion. But once again, the ball goes down here, and this is against Stoke. And there you go, Aspilicueta. Now, I'll pause here just for a second. Aspilicueta has got really, really close here. And this is what Aspilicueta does. He's a great defender. But the lovely thing is, when you roll this on, what happens? What comes into the picture now? He's got his mate in there helping him. Now, if, I, if you tell me two players I don't but, want to be up against in world football for tackling, it's them too. But, but he just can't do that uh, to go so far, can't he, if he knows he's covered in the middle with mm -hmm. Pakayoko of, and Fabricas, uh -huh. because I'm pretty sure they will uh, drop back in, in his defensive position. Otherwise, he would not go so far to, from the side. So that's why I think we will see that a lot tonight, because, uh, as I mentioned, there are three in the middle, and yeah, they are really intelligent. Yeah, I've, I've just put... I've just Done another little freeze there again. Have a look at them again. This happened all the way through his whole game, and it's constant. There's the three of them again, and you've got the guy. You've got Kante, you've got Mosey, and you've got Moses, and you've got Aspilicueta as well. I think it's going to be really, really important for them to get close, get tight, kill all the space, but break as well. And we know they're capable. We know Moses can get forward. We know Kante can get forward. But it's going to be a game, as you say, to be as tight as possible. And I think that's what we're going to have to do. Gigi. Perfect. Gentlemen, thank you very much for now. Right, we still have plenty more to come for you as we get you ready for Atletico against Chelsea. So whatever you do, do not go far as we will see you again very soon.